and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage in the sunny state of Maine on a beautiful Friday. This morning I ran up to Conway, New Hampshire to see uh, my buddy Charlie, check out his new race shop and his new to him Copo Camaro. Pretty cool stuff. Factory race car. And now I'm back out in the shop making a giant mess. And usually right in the middle of the giant mess, I said, well, I should probably film some of this. <laughs> and then my new phone likes to go dead. My remote likes to go dead. But you can't let that slow you down. I think we've got past our technical difficulties that have cropped up today. And in front of me is a Borgwana Super T10 four-speed. At one point I had, I don't know how many I had, a few years ago, in a winter-long project, I didn't feel like doing a whole lot else, so I bought, scrounged, found any her shift of body I could, and made knobs and handles and brackets and rods, and set them all up. Now, I've decided to part company with this Super T10. It pains me, but I, I agreed to do it. So I'm going to put together from pieces a her shifter that's you know, offset for a console. And I'm sure I have plenty of linkage I can make work, not my fancy rods. So I'll be taking this shifter off. This particular shifter is unique. I did a video on it many moons ago. It has three attaching bolts. First clue, something's up. It's got a grease fitting. And back when NASCAR ran a Borgwana Super T10 four-speed, that was the shifter. That is a Hurst Speedway shifter. They're pretty rare. I bought two uh, back in that time frame when I was messing with Hurst shifters. One was broken inside, and the other one was perfect. Again, they were both brand new, so... It was just a roll pin that was broken. I probably bought a bag of a hundred of them. Took it apart, fixed it, put it back together. And it works so buttery smooth. This is the smoothest H-pattern four-speed shifter ever. I have a couple inline shifters and that Rankin clutchless T10 that I bought a few months ago that I showed you, the blue one, if you remember. It's in a video if you go back. I was going to put, it, it has a long, L-O-N-G is a brand, rail type shifter, which is pretty popular. I've passed a lot through my hands, never hung on to any of them. Uh, it's not buttery smooth like this one, and it also has a setback bracket, so it's way back here. The rods are longer, but I could shorten it up, move the bracket, and still use that shifter, but probably when I use that transmission in something that needs a you know, crash box, I'd be hard pressed to not put one of these Speedway shifters on there. They're just that smooth. And I have a couple inline shifters. Also a good choice, especially with a, well, they say it's clutchless, clutch assisted, but I think you can yank the lever and it'll still go. It's a road racing transmission, so. Anyway, we'll cross that bridge and we come to it, but for today, I'm taking this one off. So in this process, I'll show you my cabinet where I have things pretty well arranged, all my good shifter parts, but I recently took, a couple months ago now, a whole bucket of shifter parts in trade. And in the trade, I think I allowed like $400 for it. That's what he wanted, so. Actually, it was like 200 for the bucket, and then another day he had one other shifter for a Mopar. Maybe someday it'll be worth something. <laughs> I'm gonna try cleaning that one up and advertising it. But anyway, I don't wanna to get too long-winded here. So, I have, have those spread all over the bench. I don't know if I mentioned price, but when I bought these Speedway shifters, I paid 350 bucks a piece. They were new old stock from a guy that sells her stuff. There was no really talking him down or anything. But I wanted them, because I had never done one before. I had no idea how much I was going to like it. I just thought they were cool and unique. Here is my shifter cabinet. We have 
boots and large aluminum round chunks to build handles out of a random pile of sticks some some shifters I've already refurbished bolts brackets rods rod ends bushings in bulk brackets that I've made uh, templates over there to make all the different brackets for the different types of shifters if you're gonna get into something you might as well get into it more shifters up here raw material I don't know if you've priced out any her stuff lately but I mean knobs and handles is $150 by itself and the shifter bodies if you can find one for a hundred you've done well regardless of condition and up from there so I haven't shopped in a while I guess maybe the world is restocked and I probably should but I think I got an ample amount now let's go over to the bench I'm not quite sure the camera gets them all in perspective here, but this is the contents of this bucket that's been sitting here for a few months. Curiosity, you know, got to me every time I walk by it, but I haven't taken the time to pull them all out to see if I, my investment was even close to, to ever pay off. It doesn't matter because I made a deal, and once you make a deal, it's done. So... If nothing else, I got a decent bucket out of it. I'm not sure you can see, but there's a bunch, five three-speed shifters over there. The type you would buy, they're Indy and Hurst, and maybe one Spock-O-Matic. <laughs> You'd buy those in the 70s, maybe into the 80s, when you're three-speed on the column, locked up from attempting to power shift it or whatever you were doing. So the next day you had to go down to your local auto parts store and buy a universal shifter that sometimes ended up working backwards and who knows. So I got a bunch of those. Uh, probably, well, I'll put them in a bucket, the back in the bottom of the bucket is is. I mean, they got knobs on them. Could probably cut the handles down because they, each Hearst handle is $100 these days at least, so. Raw material, and there's a lot of rods and, you know, just the little arms that go on the side of the transmission are usually 20 to 50 bucks a piece, so. Stuff adds up in a hurry, so I don't put a lot of value in the three-speed shifters. The four-speed shifters, they come in basically well, several styles, but as far as the Hurst ones go, you have the OEM style where you actually have to go in with like a feeler gauge, release a little lock, and the shifter handle does come out. And if you want to, you can do a little grinding and drill a couple of holes, and you can retrofit it onto your, you know, traditional style Hurst two bolt setup. The uh, shifter attaches with Two bolts and they came in different ways sometimes they're threaded sometimes they have actually this is pretty valuable right here it has the threaded piece on the side that is actually loose and the support bracket here that fits into the little channel so that's actually while it looks like a greasy piece of junk those little pieces there probably cost you you know you'd be scared 30 to 40 dollars if you had to go buy them new so also greasy so there is an a and a b body mopar shifter with a few rods missing but still pretty nice it even has the hearst handle the four speed if you had probably a you know early 70s duster this might have been your shifter I was just talking to my buddy Charlie this morning up at his race shop. He bought a brand new 1971 Duster 344 speed right there. Boom. Could be the same one. So, I got a few weird Ford shifters, and a lot of this is probably raw material that'll set in the bucket for a long time. But there are a couple four speed shifters that I can retrofit or use for parts. So, there was no great find here until I got to the very bottom. 
And I was dumbfounded to find another Hurst Speedway shifter. This one's been used, but it's not hurt. Not used a whole lot. It has that bracket I was just talking about. They're unique. They have this hole in the back. You actually have to make your bracket with a big hole, and the D10 actually pokes out through when you go for reverse. It is identical in every way to the two brand new ones I bought, and it's not used very much. So that is at least, well, five years ago, it was 350 bucks. So I'll see if I can even find one online tonight to do a comparison. But wow, that made my day. At <laughs> the very bottom, too. So that's funny, but like I say, all these, I had a one of these in the 80s. It's got the little clear coated shifter pattern. You can't, this is not the best example, but I uh, can never decide what knob I like the best. Sometimes I like a round knob. Sometimes I like a T-handle. I make the ones that stick straight up and down. I like a straight handle. I like the, probably the C2 Corvette handle. One of my favorites, long and straight. Not too long, but longer than the little six or seven inch Hurst. It's probably an eight or a 10. I have one on the other Speedway shifter over there. So I'll show it to you. Why not? One last shot of the bench. All kinds of rust. That's like some Ford Hurst bracket, a Ford handle. Again. Diamonds in the rough. Let's go look at the Speedway shifter mounted on the other T10. This is the twin to the one on the bench. The other Hurst Speedway shifter. This one has that straight C2 type handle. And then I built a just a straight, well, I guess you can't really call it a knob handle. But this one is going to stay. Famous last words. All right, I need to get busy. During the filming of this relatively short video, when I went behind the camera, I turned the volume all the way down. I don't need the volume on when I'm staring at the screen and I can see when the video starts and stops. As I mentioned yesterday, that seems to be my sensitivity problem with the microphone. So I'm hoping to put this video together here. As soon as I stop talking, and test my theory once again. Yesterday's was pretty smooth and I still had the volume up a little bit and then I realized I don't need it up at all when I'm not six feet away from the phone. So hopefully it's that simple. So I need to get this junk off my bench, probably bury it outside in the storage box and every time I need a rod or something, I'll go out and get it. One shifter I didn't highlight but I will. This is the ITM shifter. This would have been the factory shifter on both of those T10s. Both the T10s I have, I think one is out of a Z28 Camaro, one's out of a Trans Am. So this would have been the stock factory shifter. But I promised a Hurst shifter, so that's what he'll get. And I have one offset shifter left. I had two. And it just reminds me, I probably need to call the guy that promised to come back and pay a year and a half ago and uh, see if he's uh, come to that point yet. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it happens. You know what I'm talking about. But have a wonderful Friday night, and I'll catch you soon. How's that? Can't promise about tomorrow, but you never know. Probably see you tomorrow.